So just like we saw in Soundation with our audio tracks, if we actually want them to like save to the project to remember what we have, in the case of Audio Tool, we need to what they call sync to the server. And there's two ways of doing that. One is let's say you bring in like five or six samples and you're not planning to work with them all at once. You could bring them in individually and sync them to the server individually you go through and click this or once you do use something and it's in an actual audio track and it exists down here on our timeline when i go to save this it will actually save it and sync it to the server so that's what we're going to do here saving frequently is always a good idea so i'll go in here save draft let's just call this like brian example you can even put a picture on here add more tags this is for people to remix your track put a description if you want I'll just go ahead and use a title click save and you'll see that it's uploading that file solo singer and then it will eventually save the snapshot of our project it has now been saved and this audio clip is now saved into the project as well it's been uploaded to the server so we are good to go now what happens if I want to add like I don't know a drum track to this thing. I'm going to go back to our instruments and I'll just grab out the, okay, let's just grab this beatbox eight. All right. If I grab it and it loads and I want to take the output of this, let's zoom in so you can see the output, uh, the master output. If I want to take this master output and run it somewhere, I find myself in a little bit of trouble because I can't, put two different output wires into the one master. I need some kind of mixing device if I want to do that. And that's a big component here to working inside of audio tool are all of our different little audio mergers and splitters and mixers and how we go about combining signal. So why don't I start by, I don't know, let's do something interesting. Let's take the splitter actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the audio track through this okay and then each output i'm going to run into individual effects so let me actually undo that and let's listen to what we have right now so that's what we have going at the moment what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this audio track i'm going to run into a splitter and with the splitter, we have the option of running out three different outputs, okay? So the idea here is that I can run each one into a different one here. Get rid of that, get rid of that. I'll run this one out through here. I'll run this one out through here. And now I need some way of mixing all of these signals together, okay? All of these individual outputs. I could take the output of one, for example, the slope, And you can hear if I change this. We're just getting the sound of this one individual filter. So I need a way of mixing all of these together. And there are a lot of choices that we have. I'll go ahead right now and choose the merger. Why not? So the merger is the exact opposite. I can now run the slope. I can run the detune effect and I can run the delay all in here and I can actually preface which one I want to hear the loudest right now. We'll just let them all come in evenly. And now if I play this back, so let's really go crazy with the detune. And now I can actually bias towards one of these. So let's say I really want to be hearing the detune. That one is running into number B or letter B. So let's push this over towards B. Hopefully you can see this pretty well. So that's kind of cool. And that's one way that you can merge and split your signals around. The other option that we have is to actually like take something that's a little bit more classic, a mixer of sorts. And we have a variety of those available to us. We have the cobalt, which is a very basic 16 channel. Here's your pan, here's your volume, 
Here's the output. We can use that kind of boring. We also have the mini mixer, which is actually a little more exciting, which we'll probably use uh, a little bit later. And you'll see this one gives us four different inputs, but also gives us an auxiliary in and out, which we'll talk about later on. We also have the Centroid, which is the big 16 channel mixer for when you're working on a full track. That's something you'd probably be using. And then we have the crossfade. And in this example, I'm probably gonna use the crossfade so that I can get drums and I can get our sound going at the same time. So I'll take the output of the merger and I'm gonna run that into the A input of the crossfader and then I will take the output of the drum machine and run that into B. And so now if I play this, I'm not sure if there's a pattern loaded up. Oh, and then of course, what do I have to do? You actually have to run this into the final master. And let's see it. All right, right now there's no pattern going, so we'll just load up the first random preset that we have. And now we can actually bias whatever side we want. So if I want to be more the drums. Or if I want to preface the other side. So those are really the basics of routing your audio and combining your audio. Um, it's really straightforward once you get a handle on it and you understand the outputs and the inputs and what all of these things are doing. Don't forget, you can always go in and click on the info view for any of these instruments or devices and they'll tell you exactly what they do. So just from that really quick example, that's one of a million things you could do. Let your imagination run wild. Let's save this up one more time. and we're good to go.